idea to hold this small conference was born out of our, our weekly meetings here at the ICI, from conversations around failure and its meaning and its relation to success in oppositional politics. Reading Jack, Jack Halberstam's inspiring text on queer failure triggered discussions about other fields in which the notion of productive failure can be explored. Failure, as we discovered, can be an active power of change. It can be a political force and a form of resistance. In our conversations here at the ICI, we've tried to explore the notion of resistance away from its classical understanding, beyond the dichotomies of success and failure. Instead, we've approached resistance as something that takes place in the aggregation of small moments, through the alliance of weak and unspectacular events, and the congregation of vulnerable and unstable bodies. This paper takes up the themes of weak resistance and queer resistance in the context of a discussion of scale, recent debates about critique, and the definition of the political in the context of queer studies. Um, I argue that attention to the institutional context of recent debates can clarify their stakes. I turn to the work of Donna Haraway to suggest that we might reframe the debates about critique as a problem of the disciplines. This institutional analysis of the problem of critique parts ways with the heroics of queer resistance, reframing queers as scholars rather than revolutionaries. So my response will um, start with a reflection or a personal um, story of my trajectory that uh, crossed different countries, languages, and institutions. In its most material sense, resistance implies less an active power than a passive quality, a substance's lack of responsiveness to applied force. The material recalcitrance of a solid, for instance, such as a metal, consists in its unwillingness, or better put, inability to bend, a rigidity that exceeds the attempts of a subject to alter its form. My presentation uh, tried to explore the possible relation between protest movements as moments of disruption uh, and political transformation, or the new hegemonic structures that is this better? Or the new hegemonic structures uh, that such a disruption can produce or, and how these inform or influence uh, uh, new tactics, discourses, and modes of governance after, uh, after a moment of disruption. In Greece, as you know, we have all the ingredients Balit talked about. Um, we have at least six years of very um, various social uprisings. Um, on the one hand, and on the, one, on the other hand, we have, if you want, this new phenomenon of the left government taking power. Um, we could call it the new hegemonic order, um, whose success is related to the strength of the movements. And I say is related and not resulted out of, in order to be clear that we don't talk about a linear automatic development that starts with a protest movement and eventually transforms into a hegemonic regime of any kind. Okay, so <clears throat> I will speak about uh, organizing for sex workers' rights and organizing among sex workers here in Germany. Uh, what informs me is, uh, aside from my experience of being a former sex worker, also being a current sex workers' rights activist, and this will not be an academic discussion, but uh, rather a mapping out of issues and some major themes considering the organizational strategies of sex workers in Germany, so from a much more grassroots perspective. Can doing nothing be considered doing something? This is how Stephen Decombe prompts us to think about forms of resistance that might not look the part. The question forces us to weigh the call for a definition of politics that would include formations of struggle that are other, ones that might be as understated as a McDonald's employee stretching his 15 minute break to 25 minutes, as in D.G. Kelly's account of his days at Mickey D. Whether or not one decides to take on or reject this claim might partly depend on another question. What happens when nothing happens? When Paul Virilio asked this in relation to Georges Perec's work on the infraordinary, it was in order to redefine, after 1968, a politi political strategy that did not look at the political scene, 
but I'd quote the ordinary, the banal, the, the habitual. So towards the weak avant-garde, feminist public art, resistance and uh, artistic anticipation. I'm going to discuss here predominantly the work of Eva Partum, a Polish uh, feminist artist, but with references to several other feminist artworks. So this analysis is, is embedded in the queer and uh, art of failure theoretical context and also the Gaga feminism uh, might be present in it. Um, uh, in its very clearly anti-capitalist uh, orientation, strong ties to humor, parody and distance and also in the re-evaluating of the childish, silly, failed and weak. Today, given the global scale of battles to be forged socially, politically, economically and climactically as if we can even pretend to separate these with any degree of relevance, it seems crucial to ask if resistance is a suitable enough position through which to articulate movements of substantial change. 